So when Roddy Piper went in, one of the first things he did was, of course, talk again. So he was in uh, the Georgia Territory, and he was a commentator, and then he transitioned into wrestling. And then in the WWF, he was mostly talking doing Piper's Pit. But he was taking over from Buddy Rogers' Victory Corner. Did you did you ever appear? And I actually, I'm I'm asking this. I know you did appear on Buddy Rogers' Victory Corner. And how was Buddy Rogers at this point in his career? Was he still sort of the man at this time? And uh, do you remember doing the interviews with him? Well, Buddy, when I broke in and, and all the guys, Buddy Rogers was the man. You know, he was the he was pretty pretty much stood out alone. You know, he was the one that, that manipulated territories and and everything else. And um, I work, I work, I work. Well, he was in Florida at first. I think Eddie Graham used to take all the take all the former superstars that uh, guys that headlined the uh, headline cards against him, or you know, or you know, who was the greater, who was the finer mind? Johnny Valentine, Buddy Rogers, a lot of those guys. He he give him enough rope to hang himself, and then you know, and then then he'd uh, show him that E.G. was was the man, and E.G. was sharp, you know. Eddie Graham, but so I had, uh, I was, I got close to Buddy in, uh, in Florida when he was down there, then, then he was gone. And then, then again, when uh, we resumed uh, a relationship when he was back here in, uh, in the WWF and, and, uh, and of course he was with Jimmy and, and, uh, of course, Buddy was, Buddy was famous for, for taking falls and, and, uh, and suing, you know, he would, uh, I went to Larry Sharp. We came up. I was coming. For, I drove up from Florida to uh, New Jersey. As I was staying with Larry Larry Sharp, Larry Wheel had the the Monster Factory, New Jersey, one of the first wrestling schools in the United States. So I we stopped, stopped, stayed with Larry before I started. My starting date was at the Madison Square Garden on Monday. So that and we went down to the Playboy Club in Atlantic City with Buddy Rogers, and we and I knew Buddy. And I, and we walk, and he come and come up in back room, and he's walking down the, you know, only 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 the way Buddy could walk, with the big cigar and the giant uh, canary canary yellow diamond ring, and he, you know, and he's and he's just strutting down the, hey Buddy, you know, and he turned around, oh my God, you know, set set us up with dinner and everything else. So I I, I knew Buddy real well. He was a cool guy, and uh, you know, I, I procured us some loans. They were always, you know, BR's the man, but, you know, for the older pre, uh, before my time and at my time beyond the buddy was a guy. So, he, he, you know, and, and uh, but for Piper's pit, it was just a natural, you know, and I think he'd been doing portions of that before, but I mean, it, it just felt, you know, and, you know, he could do that with anybody, you know, yeah, I, I sort I sort of uh, look at some of the old archive stuff, and I wonder how Buddy Rogers could have been so bad as an interview host because he just wasn't that good. And then Roddy Piper takes over with Piper's Pit, and he was revolutionary, amazing. Yeah, well, maybe that was it. You know, the difference. But nobody was like Piper. You know, before Piper, there was no. You know, there wasn't any. There were good. Uh, there were good good promo guys. I was, but you know, I would. I wasn't, I, I never had that idea or the concept of, you know, running, a, having my own talk show or something. So, you know, these are things all, all like I said, he, his brain was uh, very compartmentalized. So, you know, these, these are, you know, ideas that came out of his head, you know, I'm sure uh, quite a bit. Uh, did you ever uh, have like, and I'm sure I know the answer to this, but did you ever have like a list of questions Roddy might ask you when you go went on the thing or was it just completely off the cuff, whatever happens, happens? Off the cuff. Just to, you know, if, if, if there was if there was a if there was a point to be made, if there was some a, a type of focus where we were going after a, a type of match or an individual or, or something, I I saw one that they ran. You know, we're just you know, we're just blowing smoke up each other's backside, being a tongue. Oh, you're great, and I'm you know, he's well, I'm, I go back. Well, you're great. And he comes back. Well, I'm great. You know, we're just back and forth. How great me and Fuji are. And, Going back, and, you know how great he and Bob are, and I take off my shirt. Yeah, he gives me his shirt. In fact, I still have got that shirt. In fact, <laughs> he gives me the hot rod shirt. You know that. Uh, but but no, no, everything was you know pretty much unless there was a unless there was a theme or a focus you're working working toward. You know, with other people, would probably you know I'm sure it was different as well. 
you know, other people he had on that, that they had, uh, uh, you know, a, a point to get across. But with he and I, normally it was just, uh, you know, just, just, you know, throw it out there and let it ride. Uh, do you remember the fallout from the uh, Jimmy Snooker coconut uh, strike? Do you remember seeing him injured in the background? I wasn't there. I, w- I wasn't in there. I wasn't there. I know him and I know him and Jimmy had. They had a hard time getting along. And Roddy would tell me, you know, they were in fist fights and everything else behind the scene. I said, God, you know, I was, like, I was with both of the guys. You know, I was, you know, been, been, you know, in the death matches with both of the guys. You know. Involved in you know uh, uh, hate hateful hate filled feuds with, with both men. So I you know and never I was I never had a problem with anybody uh, I worked with. Uh, I, I I got along with everyone.